you know, when we're all in our cars and we're heading down the highway and we look on the right side of our, our car, we see a, you know, rear view mirror and there's a sign on it. I think it's maybe required by law, but etched on every one of those right hand mirrors is a statement that says, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. And I got to thinking about that. And what's in our rear view mirror, is, at least from my standpoint, seven generations that came before me for this little cutie pie here in the pink jacket. It's about ten and a half generations. But even though they are in our rear view mirror, they are much closer than they appear. A fellow named Malcolm Pollock wrote on his blog called Motus Mentis. He says, we know how close we are to the edge, to the dissolution of civilized order into chaos and tyranny. We can feel in our bones the implacable hatred of our would-be commissars for everything that we believe is good and right and true. Along with a growing understanding that their hatred doesn't stop with just our traditions and our beliefs. As long as we live and breathe as free men and women and children, we're a threat. One of the milestones along the road to civil war is the normalization of violence as a rational response to the dehumanized enemy followed soon after by an eagerness for general conflict. Pretty harsh, but, but this thought was picked up by another fellow who goes by a, a pseudonym called Aesop. Uh, he writes at a, at a blog called Raccoon Tour Report. And allow me to give you some of the highlights of his thinking. He says, when 200 compasses all point north as being in the same direction, you've got a pretty good handle on which direction you're heading. True in the actual wilderness, and true into the wilderness in which national political discourse has wandered. Nothing looks right. There's a lingering overcast and an oppressive heavy stench of decay, along with a faint whiff of death nearby. But just beyond the fog and the undergrowth, we are entering what Sun Tzu called death ground, the place where wise generals dread to fight and where the consequences for the loser are permanent. There will be no retrograde, no faint, no headlong retreat. We are heading into the civilizational thunderdome. Two men enter, one man leaves. And the man who leaves will surely not be the same as when he entered. Steal your hearts now for what's to come. Savor the sights, sounds, the smells of what is and what was in your lifetime. That some among you someday convey to generations unmarked by what is to transpire, what they might by some means restore and someday surpass the things which daily become but fond memories. For most of my lifetime, we rejoice that our civil war was a century earlier and the whole of the continent itself was entirely unscathed by either world war. But that's about to change. Anywhere from a week to a generation from now, the relentless drumbeat of idiocy that cannot abide free men going about their days and must control every waking moment, every word that escapes their lips, every thought that flits through their minds, and ultimately, every beating of their lifeblood. It will be satiated with nothing less than a victory or a bayonet to the heart. And the funny thing is, 
They think they want the conflict they would foment. And their calling cards are all the same throughout history. They want to shut you up. They want to disarm you. And then, free of your arguments and your arms, they want to kill you. That's why they now openly proclaim the outright plan to strip the clear acknowledgments of the First and the Second Amendments and muse before God and, and everyone how joyful and pleasant it would be to come and round you up. Take such thoughts and such people exactly at the word. The Jews said, never again. The truth of human history is, again and again. To believe otherwise is but delusional, wishful thinking. So stock your larders, sharpen your weapons, fortify your walls, and gather your friends. Gather the hard-hearted ones, the ones who can deal with adversity, the ones who can laugh in the darkest days and push on through the darkest nights. What's going to come eventually is going to be a problem for two types of people. Those who have no idea of what is coming, they're like us. Those who do. We do. That's why we're here. That's why we make common cause. We want to save New Hampshire if we can. We've seen the points of their eyes. We've seen the color of their money. The object of the mirror, my friends, is history. Watch closely, because it's closer than it appears. Crop TV.